Hi, I'm Code Compliance Officer Paul Ruddock with the Town of Jupiter Police Department. And in today's presentation, we're going to discuss the top 10 code violations that have been cited for in the Town of Jupiter. Let's go through the list. Prohibited signage, illegal parking, mowing and landscape maintenance, illegal accumulation, inoperable vehicles, designated nuisances, garbage and recyclables, building permits, exterior building maintenance, and fence and wall maintenance. Let's go through some of the violations. Prohibited signage under Ordinance 27-3304. Portable signage that is not permitted in the town of Jupiter can be some examples such as pennant banners, A-frame signs, balloons, streamers, painted wall signs, animated signs, and the like are not permitted in the town of Jupiter. If you would like to put up signage that you may feel might be illegal or prohibited, but you want to put up something advertising a business or maybe a garage sale, please call the Planning and Zoning Department at 561-741-2323 to apply for a special events banner. Uh, if you're having a garage sale um, or any kind of sale at your home and you want some signage to put out, um, we ask that you not put any signage in the median, attached to any phone or utility poles, or within a certain uh, way in the intersection that might block the view of pedestrians or other drivers. And once again, we also ask that when you're having a garage sale, please do the courteous thing and remove all the signs once the sale is done. Illegal parking. Now, illegal parking can consist of boats, campers, RVs, trailers, and other uh, similar vehicles must be parked on the side of the home or the side of the property behind the front wall or in the backyard. Only one of each vehicle that was listed in the previous point um, is allowed to be parked on your property. Uh, commercial vehicles, um, which is defined as a vehicle that exceeds a uh, three quarter uh, rated towing capacity, um, cannot be parked in a residential property. And if a vehicle like that is parked in a residential community, um, can only be there for no more than one hour or legitimate loading and unloading business. And passenger vehicles, such as regular automobiles, cars, or minivans, um, must be parked fully on the driveway or on the side of the driveway closest to the property line and cannot be any further than eight feet from the driveway. Mowing and landscape maintenance. This is a big one, especially during summertime and when it comes to rainy season and grass grows a lot higher than we can cut. Grass and weeds cannot exceed eight inches on a residential property. It cannot exceed six inches on a commercial property and no higher than 12 inches, which equals one foot on a vacant lot. Uh, whenever you're clearing a property of any vegetation or of any trees or clearing land, you may need a permit. So you can call our Natural Resources Department at 561-741-2523 and ask questions if uh, clearing the lot or certain vegetation may require a permit. Better to be safe than sorry. Uh, we also recommend that you place your property, whether it's business or commercial, on a routine lawn maintenance plan so that way uh, you can keep up with the uh, growth of your grass and not get a code violation. Illegal accumulation under Ordinance 13-2 is defined as the accumulation of abandoned property, debris, waste products on public or private property. This can consist of tires, buckets, construction material, bags of garbage that are unsecured, which can be left out for animals or uh, other weather elements to take in, throw throughout your property. Um, refrigerators and other appliances um, that are set out for collection that are bigger than one and a half uh, square cubic feet, such as a refrigerator, an icebox container, or anything where any human being can possibly fit inside of, we ask when it's left out for collection to either remove the doors or to tightly secure the doors uh, with tape or with some kind of secure material to make sure that nobody sneaks inside and gets trapped. Inoperable vehicles. Sometimes there are vehicles that we may have on a property that may be donated to us. Uh, we may be given a vehicle that may need some repairs, but there are conditions when you keep one of those types of vehicles on your property. All vehicles, uh, boats, cars, trailers, RVs, um, parked at a property should uh, have a valid up-to-date license plate, should be registered with the state and be in a condition that is allowed to be driven on, on public roadways. Any inoperable vehicle that you may have uh, that may need a new engine, that may need a new axle or just some kind of repairs can be kept on your property for 30 days. However, we understand that sometimes money can be an issue and repair time and supplies can also be an issue. So if you are gonna have a vehicle on your property long-term that's not in working condition, 
We ask that you either relocate it to the backyard if your backyard has a privacy fence or an opaque fence or a garage um, where the car is actually blocked from view. Put it inside of there and take as long as you need to get the repairs done. Designated nuisances um, is defined as the accumulation of filth, obnoxious growth, or things that would threaten the public health, safety, and welfare and structures um, that are in severe disrepair are not allowed. Uh, when it comes to designated nuisances, this is a wide array of violations, which can consist of everything from down power lines to houses that are to the point that they are going to collapse or other structures or violations that are uh, deemed um, a health and safety hazard. And we ask for those situations that people take immediate action to get them corrected to uh, remove the hazard for their neighbors, passenger, passerbys, and everybody else in the neighborhood. Another big one that we see a lot in the neighborhoods um, that can grow to be a big problem are garbage and recyclables. So we understand that on garbage day, um, people are in a rush to get their garbage out, but there are a few key tips um, that I would like to give you uh, whenever garbage day comes around and we can make sure that your trash does not become a hazard to drivers or become a nuisance uh, to your neighbors. All garbage containers must be in good condition and must not be broken, torn, or um, or provide any other way for garbage or the inside uh, or the inside of items to spill out and to make their way onto the road or into your neighbor's property. Garbage cans, recycling containers, and trash couplings shall not be placed out any earlier than 12 p.m. the day um, before collection. And any containers that you may have um, out left by the roadside after being picked up. Uh, must be uh, removed from the roadway or right of way uh, no later than midnight the date of collection. So once again, big reminder, if you have trash containers that need to be put out no earlier than 12 p.m. the day before your designated pickup, and those same items must be brought back in no later than midnight the day of trash pickup. Very important. And also, garbage cans, recycling containers, and tree clippings should not be left out once again after midnight on the day of pickup. Once again, just wanted to remind you. And all garbage cans um, and containers must have a secure lid to prevent flies and other wildlife and other uh, neighborhood animals from knocking over the trash containers and getting into your trash. Because we homeowners hate nothing more than having <laughs> their garbage bags full of trash being dragged down the street by the local, uh, local dogs. Another uh, big one that we see a lot of, um, building permits. A lot of times there are questions about if I want to do this, if I want to replace a window, if I want to replace a door, do I need permits? Well, I have an important number for you that you should take down. This telephone number is for our Town of Jupiter Building Department, and they can be contacted at 561-741-2286. Very important number to hold on to because, once again, it's better to call and find out if you need a permit than for us to show up at your door and tell you you should have gotten a permit for that. And uh, just a few examples of some items that may require a permit. Um, some, this is limited, this is certain items, but not limited to uh, such things as new signage, um, uh, fences being installed, new driveways, electrical work, plumbing work, or AC work, the installation of hot water heaters, and other uh, kinds of work would require a permit. But once again, the number I gave you earlier is a great resource to verify if it does require a permit or not. Um, another important aspect of uh, building permits is the construction times. Nobody hate, <laughs> people hate nothing worse than being woken up at six o'clock in the morning by lawnmowers and chainsaws. So just to let you know about the permitted time, uh, construction work is allowed between the hours of 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. And on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., um, no work is to take place on Sundays or holidays. Big reminder, don't aggravate your neighbors. Um, and just let you know, a failure to obtain a permit um, before beginning work may result in a double penalty fee. And what that is, is uh, if you are cited for the work and you come into town to get a permit, unfortunately, what will happen is once you have been cited for doing the work without a permit, uh, you are then charged a double fee for that permit. So that's a one hit on top of the other and you want to avoid that. And once again, contact the building department if you have any questions, 561-741-2286. The exterior building maintenance code. All dwellings shall be watertight, weatherproof, rodent-proof, insect-proof, and in good repair. Once again, going back to permits, sometimes you may need to do work on uh, your property, um, whether it's replacing soffit, replacing siding, or other kinds of work. Some of that work uh, may need permits because of the fact that it is um, a change to the structure. 
Once again, call the building department at 561-741-2286 just to verify if you need that permit or not. And all outside walls shall not be stained and should be cleaned and painted regularly. Uh, we ask as a homeowner or as a tenant to keep, uh, to take pride in your property and to just make it look good um, because you'll be surprised by just occasionally painting some walls or uh, just pressure washing a couple areas can make a huge difference in the look of your house and the look of the neighborhood also. And we also ask that um, all screen enclosures um, shall not have any missing screens and should be fixed in a good condition. When it comes to fence and wall maintenance, all fences and freestanding walls shall be maintained in good repair, free of any defects. Um, some of the examples of that that we see commonly are fences that are leaning, uh, fences that are discolored, have rips, holes, tears, missing slats, um, other times where fences may be run over by vehicles and they are left leaning into the property or obstructing a sidewalk. So anytime you uh, have any fence repairs that need to be made, um, you know, we ask that you take care of those as soon as possible. If you are replacing an, your entire fence, once again, you should call the building department. Um, and then also when it comes to fence maintenance, um, another big important aspect um, are fences that secure pools. If a pool is at the property and the fence is blown over, not down, whether it's due to a storm, a car uh, may have run over the fence and repairs need to be made, um, we ask that the fence either be put back up as soon as possible, or the best thing that you can do is go to Home Depot or the hardware store and order one of those uh, four foot uh, temporary uh, barrier fences to place around the pool in the meantime to prevent anybody from going into the pool while you get repairs made and get supplies ordered. And once again, if you're installing a brand new fence, call the building department 561-741-2286 for more information. Now, my favorite part of the presentation, and today's game is going to be called Yes or No. Here, I'm going to show you a few pictures of some code violations. Some pictures may be code violations, some may be not. But let's play and uh, let's see how good you do. Um, looking at this picture, would you say that this is a code violation or not? If you answered yes, that is correct. This is a code violation um, due to the fact that, um, as you can clearly see, the vehicle is out in plain view and it would be deemed inoperable because of the fact that it does not have a valid tag attached to the vehicle. So once again, um, this homeowner would be asked to either make the repairs as soon as possible by registering the vehicle, getting a tag, or if it's gonna take a while due to financial reasons or registration process, um, put it in an area that's out of view from the general public. All right, here, <laughs> this should be an easy one. Code violation or not? If the answer is yes, that is correct. This is definitely a code violation uh, due to the fact that as you can clearly see, uh, the fence is in a very, very damaged condition, severely leaning, uh, and it needs some pretty good work. Um, so depending on the scope of the work, um, the homeowner may decide to possibly replace a few sections, or if they would just like to replace the whole thing altogether, they will need to call the building department to uh, make the necessary repairs and get a permit. Next one, uh, this one here, this picture, uh, code violation or not? If you answered no, uh, you are correct. Um, this vehicle is uh, not in violation of any town code. Um, it does have a valid tag on the vehicle and uh, the vehicle is parked completely off onto the side of the roadway because um, in a future presentation, we will discuss uh, parking regulations and we actually have it in our town code where you can either park on the roadway for 24 hours at a time or you have to park on the side of the road for no more than 24 hours. So they are in compliance. This one here. Code violation or not? If you answered yes, that is correct. Um, this, store, uh, this refrigerator um, is actually um, exceeds the size of one and a half cubic square feet, which it is big enough for a small child or infant toddler to climb inside and to possibly get trapped um, without anybody knowing. So this is a hazard, something we take pretty seriously um, in the town of Jupiter. So if items like these are to a size where a small child or human being can crawl inside of, once again, we ask that you remove the doors or just secure the doors with some tape, make it safe. Next one, code violation or not? If you answered yes, that is correct. 
Um, as you can see, especially towards the uh, bottom half of the property, um, the walls are actually uh, severely stained, um, which that can, that's an easy remedy. Um, they can either decide to paint the property or they can just take a pressure washer and uh, just get some of the dirt off and that should help uh, you know, bring the property to a more presentable condition. And I believe this is our last one. Code violation or not? If you answered yes, that is correct. Um, this trailer um, would uh, fall under our permitted uh, parking code. And unfortunately, um, the, uh, the vehicle is actually parked in the front of the property beyond the front wall of the house. So it's a simple fix. Um, looks like they have a privacy fence and the uh, trailer just needs to be moved to the backyard behind the fence and they're in compliance. So once again, I'm Paul Ruddock, Town of Jupiter Code Compliance Department. Uh, thank you for watching. We hope that this was a very informational session for you and uh, have a great day.